This week on Maker Update, a matrix for your earlobe, ESP32 for tarot, a clock you can print, makes 2024 board guide, and filament storage tips from Becky Stern. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. If you could use a little project inspiration, you've come to the right place. I've got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Sometimes innovation is just about scaling an idea bigger or smaller than anyone has tried before. A few months back, we saw Tim Alex Jacobs, AKA Mitzella, add these impossibly small LEDs to an industrial style piercing. As a follow-up, he thought he'd have a go at creating a pair of earrings with a programmable matrix of tiny LEDs. And when I say tiny, we're talking about grain of sand small. These 0201 surface mount LEDs are practically impossible to work with using just your naked eye. One sneeze and you're back to square one. Even using surface mount techniques of screening solder paste and using a pick and place machine to place each LED, it's still a tense process full of adjustments and fine tweezer fixes. Even though a two-sided board design with a microcontroller directly on the back of the matrix would keep things lighter and simpler, Tim smartly places the microcontroller on a separate board and sandwiches it together after everything's working. Otherwise, with a board this small, you can just imagine all the parts falling off as each side is heated. It'd be a nightmare. For power, again, he's using the existing battery stud backing from an off-the-shelf pair of inexpensive LED earrings. Each backing holds two LR521 cells. That said, because of the increased power demands of the matrix, he had to bring down the clock speed and LED brightness in code to keep things running smoothly. In a project like this that blends both technology and fashion, there's always a risk that the project will fall flat despite being an engineering success. But personally, I think these are really cool and somehow avoid the gimmicky look of other tech fashion projects. There's a nuance to it and a kind of candle flicker beauty that I think works really well. You can find a link in the description to the full build diary on mitzella.com along with his excellent video and the source code. Now for some news, we've got a new contest on Hackaday sponsored by DigiKey. It's called Home Sweet Home Automation and it's a call for IoT and home automation hacks and projects. The contest will run until Tuesday, April 16th. The top three projects will get a $150 shopping spree with DigiKey. More projects. On the Playful Technology YouTube channel, there's a great in-depth video on the making of this tarot card inspired escape room project. The interaction here is by touching three cards in the correct sequence, the crystal ball gets progressively brighter and a nearby box unlocks to reveal the next clue. And while the interaction itself isn't groundbreaking, the engineering simplicity behind it is a pleasant surprise. An inexpensive ESP32 board is at the center of it all, handling the capacitive sensing of each tarot card, adjusting the intensity of the crystal ball glow, triggering sound playback from a nearby audio board connected over serial, and controlling a relay for the box latch. For what seems like maybe $40 worth of components here, you really get a ton of interesting interactions and audio-visual feedback. The video too offers a ton of value with tips and tricks all along the way. I also enjoyed this digital clock project from the Ruiz brothers. When a clock project makes it into this show, it's usually because of some absurd idea or an extreme technological feat. But here, honestly, I just love the simplicity and cute 3D printed design of what they made. The parts are all relatively affordable. The enclosure has all the usual Ruiz Brothers fit and finish. And even though I could see this as a mass made product, I love that it demands a certain degree of customization to bring this to life. Even if it's just picking out your own color combination of 3D printer filament. For me, I think I'd splurge for a fancy knurled aluminum knob. Now for a few tips and tools. Sponsored by DigiKey, the annual board guide from Make is now available. You can pick it up in the latest issue of Make or grab a free PDF download using the link in the description. Lots of new and notable boards here and a nice opportunity to reflect on how the board and component shortage that we've been dealing with for the past few years seems to be behind us. On her YouTube channel, Becky Stern revisits the topic of how to store your 3D printer filament to maximize its shelf life. 
Things have come a long way from building your own filament dry box. Becky covers some inexpensive tips such as drying out silica packs to reuse them or using kitchen vacuum sealers to showing some of the commercial solutions now available to makers. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Zach, the bite size engineer, has a great video on understanding and using quadrature encoders. Not only does this video demystify what's going on inside a simple rotary encoder, it also helped me better understand how shaft encoders on DC motors are used to communicate speed and rotation direction. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know your favorite moment from this week's show. A big thanks to DigiKey for making this whole thing possible. And thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.